So in this episode, I wanna show you the quickest and easiest way to import material from any nonlinear editing system into Resolve, ready to do grading work or fusion or whatever you want to do with it. So in the previous episode, we looked at how to import from Premiere using an XML, which you can do with other applications as well, but that relies on us linking to the original media. Now the advantage of doing it the way that I'm gonna show you is we work with one single exported master from Avid, Final Cut Pro, or Premiere, whatever you're using, and we bring it straight into Resolve and we use an EDL for Resolve to automatically choose the edit points so that we can grade straight away. So it's a really quick and efficient way of working. So this is the sequence that we want to take into Resolve to do our color grading with. This is the same sequence that I did an XML workflow for in a previous video, and this time we're gonna do it via an EDL. So we're gonna really simplify the process. This is Premiere. You can use Avid, Final Cut, any editing system you want. This process will work exactly the same. So so let's take a quick look at what we've got going on on the timeline. We've got a graphic at the front. We've got a title here with a bit of a fade up on it. Uh, we've also got a bit of color management going on. So there's a bit of a look going on here. If I just match frame that, yeah, you can see that we've got our log image here and we've just put a bit of a grade on it just for the edit purpose. Uh, we're gonna remove that by the way. And then I've also got a dissolve here. So we're gonna keep that on. The EDL will quite happily take dissolves across. We've got a video layer on video layer two, which we're gonna to have to address. All the video tracks need to be on video track one. And moving through, we've got a picture, in, oh, it's not a picture in picture, it's a, just a cutaway there. And moving through, we've got some picture in picture work here. Now, if you've got a lot of picture in picture work going on or effects beyond cuts and dissolves, this is not the workflow for you. You need to look at the traditional XML workflow that I talked about in that previous episode. But if it's just one or two, like we've got here, or just a, just a handful that's quite easy to manage, what we can do is address this. So I'm just gonna see what else is going on. And we're all good. And we've got just a fade to black at the end. So the first thing I do before I start addressing these things is make a copy of this sequence. We always want to keep our master sequence intact. So I'm gonna go up here, and depending on which system you're using, so in Premiere, I just hit duplicate here, and I'm gonna call it full grade. And make sure that I'm on this one. So I'm going to, in fact, just to be sure, I'm gonna close that one down. So what I can do now is start getting all this in good preparation for the EDL. First thing we need to do is get rid of the graphics. So let's just get rid of that. And we also need to remove any color correction because obviously we want to color correct in DaVinci Resolve. So let's just zoom in there. And I think it's just these first ones here that I've got it on. So I'm gonna just say, remove attributes. And there we've got the Lumetri color. So they're now gone. I'm gonna keep the dissolve on. The EDL will support dissolves and I'll show you how Resolve handles it. Even though we're gonna export a flattened file with a dissolve baked in, the EDL handles this really well in Resolve. So I'm gonna leave that dissolve in. Okay, this track here needs to come down to one. So I'm just holding my shift key at the same time. That keeps it locked so we don't move any frame either direction. And we've got our cutaway here. So again, that needs to come down. So here, how we're gonna address this is I'm gonna leave this in situ here. I'm gonna leave it exactly where it is. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match frame each of these. So if I press F, what it does is it gives me the mark in the mark out that, that is the same duration as this. And I'm literally gonna take it and drop it on the end of my sequence. And then we're gonna rebuild it afterwards. So I'm gonna grade it as a full frame shot. And then we're gonna rebuild it later back in Premiere. So we'll do the same on this one. Let's just match frame that. Drag, drop that on. And you see, I've just left a small gap here to uh, so that when I'm in the edit, I know that these are my extra bits for visual effects. So I'm just gonna leave those where they are, or you, you could remove them if you want, but I'm just quite happy to leave them in. Then it gives me a visual reminder of what's going on. Now the EDL is just gonna ignore this track up here. And I'm gonna go along and there's a fade to black at the end. Now I like to take those off because if I'm doing any color correction, a fade to black can actually get um, some color correction in it. So it might start looking a bit warm or a little bit cold. So I'm just gonna take it off and we can reapply that after. Oh, in fact, the other thing I do just to keep things tidy is I take off the audio. But what I'm gonna do is export it out first and then remove the audio so that when we export our file to take into Resolve to grade, we've at least got audio on it. So what I need to do now is make a high resolution version of this sequence. And this is the actual 
sequence that we're going to grade. So I'm just going to do a mark in and a mark out here because we've got some extra stuff here. In fact, let's get rid of this stuff because that will come across in the EDL. So make sure we've got a nice clean timeline. So I'm now going to press Command E to export this out. And I want this the best possible quality that I can get. So work at your highest resolution that you can. This footage was originally 4K. So ideally, I would be exporting it out as 4K. But this has been made in a 1080 HD timeline. There's quite a bit of resizing going on and some picture in picture work. So I'm quite happy at this resolution. But ideally, export at the best resolution that you can. I'm going to up this from ProRes 422 to something a little bit heavier, ProRes 4444. If you're on a PC, of course, you want to export that as something like Avid DNX HD. Choose one of the sort of higher resolutions. Let's put this on maximum quality. Let's get rid of that time code. And let's just send it to the right place. So I'm going to put it into my conform episode. And I'm going to export that. So once that's finished rendering, what we're going to do is remove the audio. Remember, we've still got the audio on the original sequence. So I'm just going to get rid of that so that it's not included in the EDL. So now I'm now going to go up here and say File, Export, EDL. Now, in Final Cut Pro, you can't export an EDL without a particular plugin, I believe. So uh, what you're going to do in Final Cut Pro is export an XML, and I'm going to show you what to do with that afterwards. So what we're going to look at here is the tracks to export is Video Track 1. We are. We don't have to have include audio levels on them. We can take that off, and pretty much take it as the default. Sequence 01 EDL. Say OK, and I'm going to just put that into my conform episode, and that's done. Now what I'm going to do is export an XML as well because I need to show you what to do if you're working with Final Cut Pro. So. You don't have to do this if you're working in Avid or on Premiere, but I'm just going to send this out so that I can show you what to do. So I'm going to take my XML, I'm going to put it into my conform episode. And that's done. So remember, you don't need to do that if you're working in Premiere and Avid, you just export an EDL. So we've now rendered out a brand new master file, high quality. We're going to use the EDL to chop it up in Resolve, and we can literally start grading on it. So why would we work in this workflow as opposed to the XML workflow that I looked at in another episode? The main advantage of working this way is that you don't have to conform. So the, the file is literally baked. So any resizing we've done in Premiere or Avid is baked into the file. So we know it's going to be accurate. There's no way you can lose clips or clips can be offline. Or if you're working with archive material, the, you know, it will always be there because it's baked into the file. It makes it really simple. The other advantage of it is it's really quick. You literally load that file in, apply the EDL. The EDL's got all the information in it that it needs to chop the clip up. So you're working really quickly. And a huge advantage is the file sizes that we're working with. You're working off one master file from one high resolution master file. This might be just you know, four gigs, 30 gigs, um, even if it's 100 gigs. That project might have been originally terabytes. So you, you literally don't have to have all those camera rushes, which are very large files these days. You're just working off one flattened file. If you're working remotely, this is a really good way of working. If your editor is somewhere else, they can send you this file. Whereas if they have to send you all the camera rushes, that could be quite a task. So the file sizes are smaller. So the disadvantages of this workflow is that you are working with a baked file. So the, the edit is fixed, which is quite a good thing these days, I think. But the edit is absolutely fixed. You can't start trimming it. You can't export with handles. It's a flattened baked file. You're also restricted to one layer of video. So an EDL can only export one video layer at a time. So you can't do complex multiple picture in pictures and things like that. An XML workflow could read multiple layers, but an EDL workflow is restricted to one video layer. So you're really looking at this as a good workflow for general cuts and dissolve style editing. You also lose the raw metadata. So if you're working with camera rushes that are raw, you lose that metadata. It's stripped off when we export that out as an Apple ProRes or as a DNX HD file. So, you, so color management becomes a little bit trickier, but you still have the whole dynamic range of the clip. You can still work in log, so we can still use our LUTs or our CSTs uh, or resolve color management, but you're working on a flattened file and it can be a little bit harder to determine what the actual camera is. So this workflow is much better than using the scene cut detect because the EDL is giving us accurate cut points. So we're straight away working 
and we now just need to get that into Resolve. So let's go and take a look how we do that. So we're now in DaVinci Resolve. We have a blank project. This is a brand new project. I'm gonna to go to my settings and let's just check a few settings off. The first thing you need to be aware of is the timeline frame rate by default is 24 frames per second. If the program that you've just made is anything other than 24 frames per second, you need to change this. Now, because I'm working in a brand new project, when I import that clip, it will warn me, but I'm gonna set it anyway, because I know that that is 25 frames per second. And the other thing I'm just gonna do is go to my color management, and I'm gonna change it from Rec. 709 Scene into Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, because that is what my monitor's calibrated to, and that's what I want to work with. So I'm gonna say Save, and what we need to do now is import the file that we just created. When you're working with EDLs, it's a good rule to follow, even if you're working with more than one clip, that you put it into separate folders because the EDL wants to point to a folder and not a clip. So you'll see this in a moment, but I'm gonna right-hand click on here. I'm gonna call it sequence one. And I'm gonna make sure that there is only one sequence in each folder. So if you're working on, let's say you've got a series of 10 sequences that you've worked on, you need to put each of those clips into 10 different folders. You would have exported 10 EDLs and you'll see why in a moment, but just one clip per folder. Okay, so I could find my clip in here and go through all my different directories, or I can just bring up Finder here. There's my conform episode. There is the file that we made. I'm gonna drag and drop it into this folder here and that's good to go. So we can see that's 1920 by 1080, 25 frames per second. We've got an Apple ProRes 4444. You might have a DNX HD, but we've got a nice master file ready to work from. Okay, so here's our file. You can see there we've still got that effect going on, but we're gonna deal with that. So if I literally now brought that into an edit, it would just be a single clip. So what we're gonna do now is use the EDL to chop up the clip accurately on all the edit points that we had in Premiere or Avid or whatever you're using. So what you need to do is go to the edit page and I normally put each timeline in the same folder as the clip is. So if I've got 10 sequences, I'd have 10 folders and folder one, I'm gonna import that first EDL. So what you need to do is right hand click in here and you go to timelines and you say import and we don't want this EDL here. What we want is this one, the pre-conformed EDL. Okay, and what a pre-conformed EDL is gonna do is ask you which clip you want it to be associated with. So I'm gonna press this now. I've got a point to the EDL, which is here. I'm gonna open it up. It's gonna ask me what I want to call it. I can just call it the same name as I gave it originally. You can't have duplicate names. I'm gonna say okay. And what it's doing now is looking for the folder that the clip is in. This is why it's imperative that you have each clip in a separate folder. Otherwise you can't identify it. An EDL doesn't really associate with a clip. We're just matching edit time codes. So I'm gonna scroll down here. If you've got a lot of folders here to select the right one, if you deselect the top one, it then deselects them all and then you can choose the one that you want. I'm gonna say okay. And what that's done now is take our flattened file, our single clip and it's put virtual edits or actual edits into the clip to represent each point that there was an edit in Premiere. So if I just go through here, if I go back one frame now, there's an edit point, there's another edit point, there's another edit point. But obviously these have all come from the same .mov file that we created. So now when we go to the color page, you're ready to grade. The whole edit is completely chopped up for us, ready to grade. So there's a, there's a clip. There's a clip, there's a clip, and these are all separate scenes ready to be graded. So we've virtually chopped up the whole sequence, and this is more accurate than using the scene cut detect because there's no errors can occur. This is coming from an EDL. There's our little picture-in-picture -picture sequence that we're gonna look at, but we're gonna not grade this because that would be very hard. We'd have to track these shapes, but what we can do then, if you remember, we put the two files separately on the end. So they're now just as whole clips. And then what we would do is export that back into Premiere and rebuild that little picture in picture. So how's it doing it? Let's have a look at what an EDL looks like. So open up either a text editor or notepad and you can see here, this is the EDL that I exported, okay? It's just a simple text file. And what it's doing is saying clip one, okay, has got video on it, it's a cut. And the original file is this time code, but the master sequence started at 0000 
and the cut is at 1 second 23 frames. Then clip number two will start at 1 second 23 frames and goes on till 2 seconds 24. So this is how it knows where to put the cuts. So the only columns you're interested in is this one, which is in, and this one is out. So it's a timeline in, timeline out. Okay, record in, record out. This is the only column you need to worry about. You see here our dissolve. So the effect name is cross dissolve and it puts all the parameters in there so it knows how long to make the dissolve duration. And so that's how it works. It's just, so the information is coming from these two columns here and it just splits up that flattened file according to what's written down here. But what's important to note with EDLs is all it can bring across is uh, speed changes, it can bring across dissolves and wipes, nothing complicated though. It can't bring in things like resizing information and scaling information. But the main advantage of it is the simplicity in which it can just chop a flattened file. It gets you working super quick. So the other thing to be aware of is that we've got this dissolve in our EDL. So we bait in the dissolve into our flattened file. So let's just see how Resolve actually handles it. There it is there. So if I just click on this shot here, we can see here, if I play that through, we'll see the dissolve. So what happens is that we grade each side. So let me just do a very quick grade here. Okay, something like that. And then I'm gonna copy that grade over. Okay, but what I'm gonna do is just exaggerate this one slightly. Let's just make it a little bit cooler, okay, in temperature. And what you'll see is that Resolve has added a cross dissolve because the EDL says it's a dissolve. So the dissolve is real. So as it, this image goes into this image, there is a crossfade which helps blend the two different color grades that we've applied, even though it's a flattened file. So watch this. So it's pretty unnoticeable. I mean, technically it's not quite right, but you really do get away with it in most instances. I mean, even if I made this black and white, let's just desaturate the whole thing, you still wouldn't really notice it. If you really wanted to get these technically accurate, again, you would export them out in Premiere as two separate elements and then rebuild that cross dissolve. So there's a little bonus tip with this episode. And if you hit the link in the description, I've just done a very short piece on how to use the EDL to help you with your color management. If you are enjoying this episode, I put a lot of work into these. Hit the uh, thumbs up for me. Maybe think about subscribing and enjoy the rest of it. So what happens if you're coming from Final Cut Pro and you can't export an EDL? To do this process, Resolve expects an EDL. It can't do this process with an XML. So what you would do is you go to your edit page and you say timeline import XML, points to your XML, open it up. Don't put any of this on, you want to take all this off. Say okay. And what you get is this. So it's gonna give you an error, okay? What I'm gonna do is get rid of this one up here so this is the XML, okay, and you can see that it's trying to link to the original files. We don't want it to do that, we want it to link to the flattened file that we've created. So then what I'm gonna do is right hand click on the XML that we've just imported, I'm gonna say export, and I'm gonna use this one here, AF XML EDL. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna change it down here from being XML to being an EDL. I'm gonna call it XML to EDL, I'm gonna put it in our same conform folder. I'm gonna press save. And now what I can do is get rid of this. I don't need that anymore. And let's just re-import that. I'm gonna right hand click, say timeline, import pre-conformed EDL. So remember we're doing this if you're using Final Cut Pro because you can't export an EDL to start with. Here's our XML to EDL that we've just created. I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna to point to the bin where our sequence is. I'll flatten file, say okay, and there we go, all done. And all we need to do now is go into the color page and just start grading. We can then export that out, put it back into Premiere, put the graphics back on, put the audio back on, and you're good to go. And we can then rebuild that picture in picture using our full resolution images that we've got on the very end of our sequence here. So I hope that's helped you find a really quick and easy solution to get color grading with Resolve no matter what non-linear editing system you're using. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.